Here's a simple bulk contract that I showed you how to write in one of the earlier videos. What this contract does is if you deposit a token into this contract, it will mint you some shares. And later on, you'll be able to redeem your token by putting in the shares. However, this contract is vulnerable to an attack called inflation attack. In this video, I'll explain what inflation attack is, how to exploit this bulk contract, and what kind of protections that you can put to protect your contract from inflation attack. First of all, what is an inflation attack? An inflation attack is when the attacker deposits token into the contract to inflate the value of the shares. For example, by sending 100 tokens into this contract, each share will be worth 100 tokens. An example of an inflation attack on this contract will be the following. First, let's say that user 1 is about to deposit 100 tokens into this contract. User 0 sees that transaction and front runs user 1's transaction. User 0 front runs the transaction by first depositing 1 token into this contract. Now, if you look at the code, initially total supply will be equal to 0. When user 0 deposits 1 token, this user 0 will get shares, which will be equal to 1. So user 0 will get 1 share. Next, the same user, the attacker will donate 100 token into this contract. Here by donate, I mean that user 0 will directly send token into this contract. This will simply increase the balance of the token locked in this contract without affecting the total supply. Here the attacker is inflating the value of the share. Next, user 1's transaction is processed. So user 1 deposits 100 token into this contract by calling the function deposit. Now, we'll work out the math later, but this will give user 1 0 shares. And finally, user 0 will withdraw 200 tokens plus the one that he initially deposited. Okay, so this is the step that the attacker will perform in order to steal user 1's deposit. Let's dig into the details and see how this actually works. We'll map out the balance of token locked in this contract, user 0's share, user 1's share, and total supply after each of these steps. The first step is user 0 deposits 1 token. So the balance of token locked in this contract will be equal to 1. User 0's shares, well, if you look at the code, so user 0 deposits 1 token. At this point, total supply is equal to 0. So the amount of shares to mint will be equal to the amount that was deposited, which will be equal to 1. So user 0 will receive 1 share. User 1 has not deposited yet, so this person will have 0 shares. And in total, the total shares will be 1. In step 2, user 0 donates 100 tokens. So user 0 will directly send 100 tokens into this contract without calling any of the functions. So the balance of tokens locked in this contract will be 100 times 1 e 18. Here we're assuming that this token has 18 decimals and plus 1 which was sent in step 1. The shares has not changed, so user 0 will have 1 shares, user 1 will have 0, and the total supply is still equal to 1. Okay, how about in step 3? In step 3, user 1 deposits 100 times 1e18 tokens. And here we said that this user will receive 0 shares. So let's see why this is. So let's calculate user 1 shares. And this will be equal to, the way the share is calculated in this case, will be by executing this part of the code. The amount of tokens that user 1 sent will be 100 times 1e18. Total supply will be equal to 1 at this moment, divided by the balance of token locked in this contract. The balance of token locked in this contract at this point is 100 times 1e18 plus 1. Notice that 100 times 1e18 times 1 is equal to 100 times 1e18. And on the denominator, 100 times 1e18 plus 1 is greater than the numerator. So when we do this division, this will round down to 0. User 1's share, when user 1 deposits 100 token, will receive 0 shares. Since user 1 received 0 shares, total supply has not changed. So total supply will still be equal to 1. And the last step is for user 0 to withdraw all of his shares. At this point, the total supply of shares is 1. User 0 has all of the shares, which is equal to 1. So when user 0 calls withdraw, he'll be able to withdraw all of the tokens locked in the contract, which will be 200 times 1e18 plus 1. So after user 0 withdraws his share, the balance of token will be 0, user 0 shares will be 0, user 1's share will be 0, and the total supply will be 0. Next, I'm going to show you a demo of this code by writing a test in Foundry. 
So I'm going to scroll all the way down and we'll name this contract bolt test is test. And for the setup, we're going to need the bolt, bolt, private, bolt, and the token, token, private, token. And we'll have two users, address, private, users is equal to, let's say, address 11 and address 12. Address 11 will be user 0 and address 12 will be user 1. For the setup, we'll deploy the token in the vault. Token is equal to new token and vault. Vault is equal to new vault. For the constructor of the vault, we'll need to pass in the address of the token, address token. And then for each user, we'll mint some tokens and approve the vault to spend the tokens from the user. For uint i equals 0, i less than users dot main i plus plus and then say token dot mint two users of i let's mint 1000 token 1000 times 118 next each user will approve the bot to spend the tokens so say bm dot prank users of i and then say token dot approve address of bolt to spend max uint type uint 256 dot max next let's write the attack so say function test public and what we're going to do is user 0 will deposit 1 and then user 0 will donate 100 tokens and then user 1 will deposit 100 tokens and at each step we'll print the amount of tokens that each user can redeem so to do this first I'll write a function called function print and inside here we'll console log some stuff including the balance of the token total supply shares of each user and how much each user can redeem so to do this, first I'm going to go back up to the bolt contract. And here we have a function called withdraw, which calculates the amount of token that a user can redeem. For this test, I'm going to create another function called function preview redeem. And it's going to take in the amount of shares, uint256 shares, external view returns. And it's going to return the amount of token that can be redeemed for the shares that was passed as input returns uint256 and I'm gonna copy this part of the code paste it and then return it now I also have to handle the edge case of when the total supply is equal to zero so say if total supply is equal to zero then return zero okay so this function instead of actually calling the function withdraw We'll just call this function to calculate the amount of tokens that a user can withdraw given the amount of shares. So going back down, inside here we'll log some status. We'll log the total supply of the vault. We'll log the balance of tokens logged in the vault. Shares of user 0 and shares of user 1. Amount of tokens that user 0 can redeem. And amount of tokens that user 1 can redeem. So we'll call this print function after each of these actions. So say print, print, and print. Okay, and the final step is to actually write the code for these actions. Okay, so the first step is user zero deposits. Say bm dot prank user zero bolt dot deposit one. The next step is for user zero to donate. Say bm dot prank users zero and then call token dot transfer transfer to bolt address bolt we'll transfer 100 tokens, so say 100 times 1e18. And the last step is for user 1 to deposit 100 token. So what I'm going to do is copy this code, paste it here, change user 0 to user 1, and he's going to deposit 100 token, 100 times 1e18. Okay, and that completes the code for this attack. Okay, let's try compiling the contract. Inside my terminal, I'll type forge build. Okay, I need to go fix the function print. So going back up, private, try compiling the contract again. Okay, and our contract compiles. So let's try running the test. Forge test dash dash match path test bolt dot test dot so dash bbb. Okay, the test ran successfully and let's examine the last log. So we want to check the status after user one deposits. Total supply, total shares of the bolt is 1. Amount of tokens locked inside the bolt is 200 times 1e18 plus 1. 
user zero has one share and this means that user zero will be able to redeem all of the tokens inside this contract which will be 200 times 118 plus one and user one will be able to redeem zero tokens there are several ways to protect against the inflation attack the first way is for user to pass some kind of mint shares so that when they deposit after it mints the tokens it would check whether the amount of share that was minted was greater than or equal to the minimum share that the user specified. So this will protect against front running. Another protection is to have an internal balance instead of querying the token balance. Instead of querying the token balance over here, we will have some kind of internal state variable that keeps track of amount of tokens locked in this contract. And this will prevent the attacker from donating to this contract and then inflating the shares. Another way to protect against the inflation attack is to have some kind of dead shares. This means that the first depositors portion of the shares will be burnt. And this will guarantee that the contract is the first depositor. This is the approach that Uniswap B2 took. And the last approach to protect against inflation attack is a decimal offset. This is done inside the Open Zeppelin ERC 4626 contract. 